Hi, students. Hope you're doing fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting concept in Unit 3. We're going to see design of ALU. In this video, we're going to see what is ALU and what is the importance of ALU. We're going to see how to design a 4-bit ALU and what are the design issues in ALU. This particular video is very, very important because this video is going to set the tone for the upcoming videos. We are going to see about adders, multipliers, different types of adders, subtractors and all those things, right? So, all those are components of ALU, right? So, we are going to see first how to design an ALU, right? And before seeing the design of ALU, you, you know that ALU is the heart of central processing unit, right? In unit 2, we have seen how the organization works in the computer, right? That is, you have a processor. And you have a memory, right? And you have ALU, right? And we know that all the functions is done by processor. Processor is the heart of computer and it performs all the operations, right? And we already seen what is the operation, how it executes each and every instructions, right? That is, in order to perform any particular operation, what the processor has to do? The processor has to get the information from the memory, right? Because the instructions will be saved in the memory first, right? So, only from the memory, it receives the instruction and data. And after receiving the instruction, the processor will process that particular instruction, right? And while it is processing the instruction, it will, it will if it come across this particular instruction, that is, for example, add A, comma B, what it will do is, it understand that this is an addition operation which has to be done by ALU, right? So, what it will do is, it will send that information to ALU and it will send the data that is required, that is A and B, right? For that particular ALU and then it waits for the result from the ALU, right? Which means ALU is the one which performs all the operations in the computer, right? That is, all the arithmetic and logic operations, right? Even though the process controls everything, right? But the main result, the, the, uh, the complete operation, everything is done by ALU, right? That is the arithmetic and logical unit, okay? Right. And once it is done, what it will do, it will send to the processor and once again, the processor will send back to the memory, right? We have already seen this in unit 2, right? And we know that ALU is capable of doing arithmetic and logical operations, right? So, what are the other operations it can able to do? As I said before, arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, Similarly, the logical operations like un, or, not, gates and all the logical operations can be done by ALU, right? And similarly, you can also store the information and move the information. All the operations can be done, right? And the complex operations such as floating point and decimal operations, everything can be done in ALU, right? And everything is done in ALU based upon the instruction set, right? It has an instruction set architecture and it knows how to execute that particular architecture. Okay, and in recent times, the modern computers, you have, there are multiple ALUs in order to improve the efficiency of the computer. Okay, so this is the overview of ALU, right? As of now, you got to understand that ALU is the one which performs all the arithmetic and logical operations. Correct, right? And you can see this is the organization, configurations of ALU, right? In ALU, it has instruction set architecture, it has accumulator, stack, and register register architecture and it can be register stack architecture and register memory architecture right all these configurations is possible in ALU right and actually the size of the input quantities of ALU is referred as word length of the computer right we have already already seen what is word right and what is bits and bytes in unit 2 correct right now we'll see the design of ALU right that is, the ALU symbol is, this is the ALU symbol, where you'll have carry in, right, and select input, and also you'll have data input, that is A and B's data input, right, you have a select line, right, based upon the select line, the operations will be decided, whether it is an arithmetic operation or logical operation, right, and you have something called carry in, which produces the carry out, right, and the result will be obtained here, and there is a zero flag and as well as overflow flag, this is the 
normal alu symbol and depending upon the bits it may vary right that is for example in four bits you'll be having four bit inputs right so the design of alu right this is the symbol and you know that it is capable of performing all the arithmetic and logical operations right this is the arithmetic operations and these are the logical operations right we will start with one bit alu first right in order to uh, understand a 4 bit alu right 4 bit alu is nothing but this is this is not a 4 bit alu this is uh, 1 bit 4 1 bit alu multiplex to form a 4 is to 1 alu right so that is this is 1 bit alu this is 1 bit alu this is 1 bit alu and this is 1 bit alu and this 4 1 bit alu is combined to form 4 is to 1 right this is 4 bit alu right but now you have to understand what is what is the drawback of 1 bit alu right as i said it is capable of performing all the logical operations so it has and gate r gate xr gate and you can see there is an adder right and as i said these are select lines based upon which the operations will be done okay so if it is 1 bit right if you take this is this is 1 bit alu right so in 1 bit alu what you have you have two select lines you have two inputs and you have an three inputs and you have an output correct right but here in one bit alu only one operation can be done that is based upon the signal that is based upon these two signals s1 and s0 the operations will be predetermined that is if s1 is equal to 0 and s0 is equal to 0 both are 0 the output will be a and b and operation will take place and if it is s1 is equal to 0 and s0 is equal to 1 or operation will take place right and if s1 is equal to 1 and s0 is equal to 0 then xr operation will take place and if both is 1 then it is add operation will take place right this is the functionality of one bit alu which means it will it can produce only one operation at a time right so based upon the input signal it generates right then it, it, it generates the output okay now what is four bit alu right as i said right four bit alu you have four bit alu 16 bit alu 32 bit alu right so what is 4 bit alu right it can perform both arithmetic and logical operations right and it can perform 16 arithmetic and logical operations right how is it possible you can see here this is the inputs right that is it has four inputs from s0 s1 s2 and s3 and depending upon the combination you can see here we will write an 8421 code right normally right 0 0 0 1 that is zeros are considered as low and one is considered as h you can see here l l l and l l h right and depending upon these combinations right depending upon these combinations right it can you can see here depending upon these combinations you can see total 16 arithmetic and logical operations is performed all the arithmetic logical operations number 16 arithmetic logical operations is performed in 4 bit alu right everything depends upon these configurations okay and these are the operations you can understand from this particular tabulation okay right so as if now we don't want to go in depth about 4 bit alu we just understand 4 bit alu is capable of producing 16 arithmetic and logical expressions okay and you have to understand right like in order to go depth right this is a very important design of alu where you can see you have an arithmetic unit and a logic unit and these are the inputs data inputs right and you can see uh, s1 s0 and also a select line select line is con connected here right and these are the expressions which can be obtained okay and you can see a lot of arithmetic and logical expressions okay normally how it works everything is based upon the select lines in this particular design right in this particular design you got to understand right that is s2 right based upon the value of s2 if s2 is equal to 0 if s2 is equal to 0 then it performs arithmetic operation right and if s2 is equal to 1 it performs logical operation you can see here up to this one right up to this one up to this one this is an arithmetic operation and after this this is a logical operation right so this is one right so this is how the alu works okay based upon the input combination it produces the arithmetic and logical expressions okay and in this unit right up and now you can understand right 
ALU can able to perform all this operations, addition, subtraction, all those operations, correct? Right. And you got to understand one particular thing. In order to carry out all these operations, right, adding, subtraction, everything, right, you need a combination circuits in the in the ALU design, correct? You need an adder, right? You need a ripple carry adder, right? You need a subtractor or you need a logic gates to implement this particular operations, correct? Right. And in this unit, what you will do is you will study about all this particular components which is used in adder, ALU, right? That is adders, subtractors, and multipliers. What are the different multipliers? How it is used in ALU? That is what we are going to see. Okay. And today, what we have seen is we have seen what is ALU, right? What is the design of ALU? We have seen what is 1 bit ALU, what is 4 bit ALU, and you have seen the important design of ALU as well. Right? Hope you understand the logic behind it. Right? Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar, Kurombo, useful Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.